What is going on everybody? Welcome back to another video, Cup Godo 1. So today we are doing our third video for this particular uh, array question, which is finding the missing number if array 1 is a non-negative and array 2 is a shuffled version of array 1 and one integer is missing. Um, this is going to be a much quicker way to do it. Uh, one that may not have seen intuitive to some, but um, once we go through it, it will. So we're going to utilize sets. So first I'm going to define our function with two different arguments, argument one and argument two, nothing new there. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a variable x and we're going to simply make an asset array of array one. And from that, I'm going to subtract the set of array two. Of course, I'm going to want this to all be one unit. And I will simply return printing of X. And I'm also going to address this another question, which is about order. So let's do some multiples of numbers. Seven. I'll explain this to you in just a second. Three, two, one. It's going to be a shuffled version. And we do have to include our numbers. So you'll notice we can quickly see off that the, um, I don't want that in there. The missing number is going to be five. I repeated seven. I have five at the end numerically. So it's not a numerical sort of one, two, three, four, five. So we have 77 and seven, four or five. So it's coming later in the pack. It's the missing number that we don't have in here. And we have duplicates seven and seven, and we have 77. So I wanted to show that for the purpose of debugging because a previous Listener commented um, that running through how we were doing it, uh, if you added duplicates, it screwed up the code, or if you ran the five later, it did. So we got rid of the the having the missing number later, getting rid of by doing a sort. Uh, now this will be a different way to get rid of duplicates. So we're going to run it to see where we're at, and we get five. But noticed we're getting a dictionary of five. So we have the right number of five it's a dictionary i'd rather it be a list just in terms of how we're working so now we get a list of five so let's debug this and see what we're doing so run the debug and let's start f eighting so like always, once you run a debugger on, um, on a definition, it's never going to run the actual code until that function is called. So here we're calling the function finder. We're passing argument one and argument two. That was silly. Argument one and argument two. Let's start that over since I made a change. So once we called finder with our two arguments, our array one and array two, it's going to simply put them into memory, which we can see here. We have our class list of this first array, and then we have a class list of the second array. Do, 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 do. do you want to go back to the console? And then I'm creating my first variable here, which is just X. And with that X, we said we want to make the output be a list. And we're just creating a set of array run and a set of array two. And a set is an unordered pair of unique elements. So it's taking the array and it's going to make it, the order is not going to matter. We're not caring about the order, so we can use sets. But it's going to remove uh, duplicates. It only keeps unique elements. So if we printed out a set of array one, we'd have one, two, three, four, seventy-seven, seven, and five. We'd get rid of this duplicate seven that we have in this place. And then we do the same thing, creating a set here for array two. Um, there are no duplicates. Oh, I'm sorry, there are sevens. So this uh, set array would be three, seven, two, one, four, six, seventy-seven. It would get rid of the duplicate seven in the second array. Uh, and again, order does not matter. So set is a quick way to do that. So we're just taking a set of one, getting rid of duplicates and subtracting. It creates um, this array, pretty much turns it into a scalar by adding everything up. And then we're subtracting that from this scalar of this add up. And the difference is gonna be our missing number. And then we're simply returning that printout of that missing number. And again, this list here was just to give the output to be a list instead of a dictionary because the default 
was going to be a dictionary. So nice, clean, easy. Um, one, two, three, just to quickly compare two different arrays of uh, unlimited value in terms of elements with repeating elements uh, and having the missing number out of sequence in terms of a numerical component. Uh, we can do this. And if you did, let's for argument's sake, let's say 99. So now we have two missing elements. We're going to be missing five and we're going to be missing 99. So as you can see, it's going to give me a list of 99 and 5. So even if you have multiple missing elements, utilizing a set of array 1 and array 2, and then subtracting the two differences, it will give you an element-wise <clears throat> element difference of the 99 and the 5. So this is a nice quick way to, not just for one missing number, but for multiple missing numbers. All right, thank you, and have a good day.